Hello and welcome to the American Indian Resource Center Letter Transcription Project. My name is Kasha Samel and I'm the American Indian Resource Center Librarian with LA County Library. Before we jump into the transcription portion of the program, let me tell you about the American Indian Resource Center, or for short, the ARC. It was established in 1979 and is located on the second floor of Huntington Park Library. We have the largest public library collection on American Indians and the American Indian experience with over 15,000 catalog items in our collection. And so I'm super excited to give everyone a brief tour of the American Indian Resource Center. Here is our periodical section. We have magazines, newspapers, and series publications. They range from research journals to community-focused publications. Further down, we have our fiction area. And across, we have multimedia, which includes feature films, documentaries, music, audiobooks, all in either VHS or in CDs. We do own some audio cassettes and 18, 16, and 35 millimeter films, but those are shelved in a different part of the building. Originally, this collection was mostly geared for an adult audience. We're pleased to say that we're growing our children's and teen collection, which you'll find here. We received many specific tribal and nation-focused requests, which is why we have a section on tribal studies that span two whole walls. Another popular section is our California collection, which focuses on California Indian pre-colonial experiences, the mission period, and present-day topics. Here, you'll find materials on tribal nations like the Hoopas, Pomos, and other local tribes like the Gabrielino Tongvas and the Chumash. And for those who are interested in genealogy or special archives, we do have the microfilm sets of the Indian Census Rolls 1885 to 1940, the California Indian Census of 1928, and letters received by the Office of Indian Affairs, California Superintendency, 1849 to 1880, which are the set of letters we will be talking about today. While other institutions may have copies on microfilm, we are the first to have these letters digitized. The ARC obtained these letters in 21 microfilm reels from the National Archives and Records Administration. The National Archives stores and maintains important documents and records created by federal agencies. These letters were from the Bureau of Indian Affairs, a federal agency that played an important role in the relations between the federal government and Native tribes and Alaska Native villages. The full collection of letters received by the Office of Indian Affairs, California Superintendency, 1849 to 1880, was digitized in 2005 with over 20,000 frames or pages. They were sorted into approximately 5,520 letters and basic metadata was created from the titles, creators, and to whom they were addressed. We have the full collection on DVD available to check out. It wasn't until 2019 that this transcription project went live. Currently, we have 94 volunteers who have transcribed letters and approximately 741 letters transcribed. The California mission period was from late 1760s to the 1830s. Colonial powers in California went from Spain to Mexico to the US. And so these letters span between the year prior to California US statehood to the first 30 years of statehood. In the 1848 treaty ending the Mexican War, Mexico ceded California and other southwestern states to the U.S. Shortly after, gold was discovered in California. Unlike in previous states and with other tribal nations in those areas, the U.S. government did not follow what they did in the past, which was to first establish relations with tribes, create treaties, and then grant permissions for settlers to populate the area. What happened in California was very different. The gold rush drew in an overwhelming amount of gold seekers. Violent acts were committed against California natives. Within two years of the gold rush, 100,000 California Indians, two thirds of the population were killed. The US government had very little information about California and the California tribes. Methods they used to work with Eastern tribes did not work with California tribes since there weren't many commonalities between California and Eastern tribes. Because of these reasons, and the fact that they needed to establish authority in the recently acquired territories, 
the U.S. government decided to hire newly appointed agents to report back information on California tribes and the government and settlers' relations with California tribes. Many of these agents were new to California and were not familiar with the many indigenous groups populating California. What makes the letters received by the Office of Indian Affairs, California Superintendency, 1849 to 1880 important? These letters show colonial and government interactions with California Indians. Those who wrote these letters were government officials and civilians. The letters on occasion mentioned land and water areas the different tribes and settlers were using, treaties, big events, and conflicts, which makes this collection a great primary resource. However, readers and transcribers should be aware that these accounts are from a colonial power point of view. The letters do not represent the many perspectives of California Indians. And also, the letters may have sensitive and traumatic content. So why then, if it's not from a native perspective, are we transcribing these letters? Because it still helps to tell us what happened to California Indians. For instance, CaliforniaIndianHistory.org referenced many of these letters to provide a better understanding of what happened in the past that we may not hear today. What also makes this project exciting is that it's accessible to anyone with internet access and is word searchable. This means you can look up different words or terms and will be able to pull up specific letters that have these words. Now let's turn this over to Amber. She'll explain more about how you can help us in transcribing these letters. Hi, my name is Amber Kuo. I'm the cataloging librarian at LA County Library. In the following video, I will be showing you how to help us out with the letters transcription project by using our transcription website and also explain our transcription rules. To get started, first type in the URL www.fromthepage.com in your browser. If you are a new volunteer and you don't have an account yet, please click on sign up to transcribe on the upper right side. And over here, you can fill in your username, email address, password, and the real name. Once this form is completed, click on create account. When you have your login info, you can click on sign in on the upper right corner and put in your username and password to log in. To find a transcription project, click on find a project on the upper bar. FromThePage.com is a crowdsourcing website that allows institutions or libraries to host their transcription projects. Here you can find many collections from different organizations. You are welcome to browse through these projects to find which collections appeal to you. To find our AIRC letters transcription project, go down the list and look for LA County Library, Letter of the Office of Indian Affairs, 1849 to 1880, California Superintendency. Click on this link and it will take you to our project landing site. Alternatively, if you have worked on the collection recently, you can also access the collection by clicking on dashboard on the upper right corner. And here you can access the feed of your recent activity in the projects that you're contributing to and see a feed of your most recent activities. Here is our project's landing site. You can read the project's background information here in the About section. If this is your first time, be sure to check out our transcription guideline. To find out more about the collection and search for the fully transcribed letters, please click on this link and it will take you to our digital collection site. After our demonstration here, I will give a brief tour of our digital collection. Our letters appear under the works heading. Each letter has a title code that helps us identify it along with the number of pages the letter contain and what percentage the letter has been transcribed. 
This information is also displayed next to each letter in the form of a progress bar. If the bar is white, that means this page has not been transcribed yet. If the bar shows dark green color, it means a page has been transcribed and reviewed, and it's ready to be added to our collection. If the bar shows light green color, that means a page has been transcribed, but it needs to be reviewed. We can select a letter that hasn't been transcribed yet, or take a look at some of the previous transcribed letters and review them. See if you can make any corrections. Or simply click on Start Transcribing to work on a brand new letter that hasn't been transcribed yet. To start transcribing, click the title code of the letter you would like to work on from the list of works. And it will take you to an individual letters landing page. Here you can see each page of the letter and any completed or in progress transcription. Click on the image or the number of the page to start transcribing. Be sure that you are on the transcribe tab at the top of the workspace in order to start transcribing. If you're on the overview tab though, you won't be able to type anything in the transcript window. In the transcription window, you can add any new transcriptions or correct any existing transcription. Be sure to familiarize yourself with our transcription guidelines at the bottom of the page. I will also talk about our transcription rules in details later. If you have any comments or questions about a particular page, you can add it in the notes and question field at the bottom. Once you're done with the transcription, click on Save Changes. Be sure to save your work regularly. Occasionally, you may encounter a blank page in the letter. You can mark a page as blank by checking the box next to Mark as Blank. When you complete a transcribe a page, or you feel this page needs further review, please check the box next to Needs Review, and then click on Save Changes. This will notify our librarians that the transcription is ready to be reviewed. Other volunteers may also review the page and make corrections. You can always come back to a partially transcribed page later or leave a page for someone else to complete. You can choose full screen to make the screen larger or click on the plus sign to zoom in the image. Click on the minus sign will zoom out of the image. Once you zoom in, you can use the left button of your mouse to drag and hold the image to see different parts of the letter. You can also use your mouse wheel. When you scroll up the wheel, it zooms in the image. When you scroll down the wheel, the image is zoomed out. The Go Home button will put the image back into its original position. Toggle Full Page will turn the screen into a full page mode. You can also rotate the image left and right. Depending on your preference, this pull down menu will allow you to place the image at the left, at the right, at the top, or at the bottom. To move between pages of a letter, click on the left or right arrows at the top right of the document workspace. Once the transcriptions are completed, our librarians will review the work. If the transcription is deemed acceptable, we will remove the record from the transcription website and upload the letters with its metadata into our digital collection site which is here, history.lacountylibrary.org. You will be able to view LA County Library's various digital collections here. Our letters collection is stored in this link, Letters of the Office of Indian Affairs, 1849 to 1880, California Superintendency. 
and you'll be able to browse through our letters collections here. Click on any of the letters you would like to see and you'll be able to see the original document and the transcriptions here. Also, along with the item description down below. Now, we would like to talk about our transcription rules. Our transcription policy is to transcribe exactly what you see. If you see any punctuation marks or abbreviations, simply type exactly what the letter wrote. You do not need to spell out the whole abbreviated words or try to correct any misspellings. In this example, the correct transcription for this line should be the exact abbreviated form. You do not need to type out the entire spelling. But as an option, you, if you see a word that is misspelled or the spelling is different from modern spelling, you may type in the correct or current spelling of the word in a bracket following the word. For example, this sentence reads, for a thorough investigation. The word thorough is spelled T-H-O-U-R-O-W here. It may be a mistake or from an old spelling. You could put the correct spelling in the bracket behind it. If you see words that have been crossed out, you can skip them. You do not need to transcribe what's been crossed out. In this image, this word here is crossed out. You do not need to transcribe it at all. If you are not sure what the word is, but would like to take a guess, you can indicate it with a square bracket followed by a question mark. In this example, I'm guessing the word may be cap L, but I'm not exactly sure if my spelling is correct. I will put my guess in a square bracket followed by a question mark. In another example, if you have an idea of what the word might be, it could be a person's name or a place, but you couldn't make it now. You can also indicate it in brackets. In this example, I'm guessing this word here, it might be a person's name, but I couldn't figure out the exact spelling. So I will put name in square brackets followed by a question mark. Other volunteers or reviewers may attempt to transcribe it if they know what the word might be. If you really can't figure out the word at all, type illegible in brackets. You don't need to spend too much time trying to figure out every single word in the letter. The goal of this project is to get the letters transcribed as much as possible, but we're not expecting 100% accuracy from everyone as some of these letters may be very difficult to read. On the other hand, if you spot illegible in someone else's transcription, feel free to correct them if you know what they are. Don't worry about formatting. If you see words that have been underlined or made italic bold, just type out the word itself. You don't need to add any additional formats to the transcription. Sometimes, Words may be broken apart or connected by hyphens and line breaks. Just continue on to type out the whole word without any extra spacing. You do not have to enter a new line for every line break on the letter either. Simply type the entire paragraph all together. In this example here, the word forwarded is divided in half a line break and connected by a hyphen. I will type out the entire word without any spaces. Now, I would like to talk about some of the common abbreviations in old handwritings. As I have mentioned in our transcription rules before, you don't need to spell out the abbreviations when you come across one. Just transcribe exactly how they were written in letters. We only list out these abbreviations to help you understand the content of the letters. Please bear in mind that this is not the most comprehensive list. I've only listed the most common abbreviations that I've seen in our letters. One of the most common abbreviations I've seen is etc. Back then, people, people may write etc. with a special symbol that looks like an upside down four or personal variation, followed by letter C. You may use the ampersand sign to replace a symbol. Another common abbreviation is this word Esquire or ESQ. It is a courtesy title referred to men with higher social ranks. Squire is often being added at the end of a person's name in these letters. 
Another common abbreviation I've seen in this letter is the word instant, or INST for short. It means a date in this month. Some letters may begin with, I received your letters on the 18th instant, or in this example, the sentence reads, your instruction of the 18th instant are duly received, which means the instruction will receive on the 18th of this month. Notice that both instant and receive are abbreviated. On the other hand, ultimo or ot means a date in the previous month, so same thing, someone may write, I received your letter on the 18th oat. That means I received your letter on the 18th of last month. In this example here, the sentence reads, I have the honor to acknowledge the receipt of your letter of September 19th oat. So that means this person received his letter on September 19th in the last month. And very often, I notice that most of the letters in our collections end with closing words like this, very respectfully, your obedient servant, and followed by the person's name and title. Your obedient servant may have variations or abbreviation. Sometimes they may simply put Y-R-O-B-T-S-R or Y-O-U-R-O-B-D-S-E-R-T. Most of these letters were written to the Commissioner of Indian Affairs at Washington, D.C. from the Indian agents in California. So the receiver part of the letter may be addressed to the Commissioner in the abbreviation form. In the old handwriting, double S is often written like this, with the first S that looks like a cursive F. So in this example, this word is actually the set with the double S in the middle. And over here, this is actually Fort Ross, California. Some of our letters were written from military officers that deal with Indian conflicts in California. So you may see different ranks of military titles refer in the letters. I've listed down some of the most common military abbreviations here. For example, ADH, ADJT means adjutant, BBG means brevet brigadier general, CAP means captain, COL means colonel, headquarters may be split into two words, GEN means general, LIUT or LT means lieutenant, and MAJ means major. And here are some of the most common name abbreviations that are found in our letter collections. Bench means Benjamin, Chase means Charles, Jace means James, JNO means John, RO means Robert, SAML means Samuel, THOS means Thomas, and WM means William. If you're interested to learn more about paleography or old handwriting, National History Museum put a document together with various examples of abbreviations or handwriting styles I'll put the link here for you as a resource. This is the end of our presentation. If you have any questions or issues regarding this transcription project, feel free to send us an email to digitalprojects at library.lacounty.gov. Thank you for making the time and efforts to help us complete this transcription project. We really appreciate all of our volunteers for helping us out. I'd like to take the time to thank Kelly Riddle, Amber Quo, Mary Yogi, the Digitalization Committee, librarians and staff who worked on this project, the previous ARC librarian Michael McLaughlin, the student workers and interns, and most especially our current and future volunteers for making this project possible. If you would like to know more about the American Indian Resource Center or this transcription project, please visit the links on the next page. We hope you've enjoyed American Indian Resource Center Letters Transcription Project. Click the link in the description box for upcoming programs, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for easy access to new videos. Bye for now.